Several divisions of the gastrointestinal tube undergo uh, diverse types of rotation. The first one is the stomach. So if this is the ventral view of the stomach before the rotation, let's consider that the axis of the first rotation will be the longitudinal axis and uh, this is the anterior view so we got the right side here and the left here so what happens is that the that the uh, original ventral ventral surface goes to the right while the dorsal posterior surface goes to the left so it's kind of a a kind of a 90 degrees clockwise rotation basically uh the the stomach is is rotating with its right side dorsally and the left side to the front. So after this uh, first rotation we got the future lesser curvature on the right, the greater curvature on the left, and the next uh, rotation will be around the axis that like goes anterior posteriorly so it's from the back to the front and it's again 90 degrees in this direction so the lower part that the future pyloric part goes up and this part goes down which results in something that already resembles the the uh, anatomy and position of the of the stomach if this is the esophagus this will be the cardiac incisure the the fundus the body with the greater curvature Here will be the lesser curvature, here will be the pyloric region and the duodenum. The duodenal window originates through this movement of the pylorus upwards. Right? It's, it's dragged upwards. Uh, this duodenal window will be filled with the head of the pancreas later on. So this is the esophagus. the cardia, the fundus of the stomach, the greater curvature which is on the left, on the left, the lesser curvature on the right, uh, the pyloric region and the duodenum. Sorry. Now, together with the rotation of the stomach, also the mesenteries are pulled and rotate. So let's make some cross sections through the embryonic body. The first will show the situation before the rotation of the mesenteries. Dorsally, we'll get the uh, neurotube with the neurocrest with the dorsal aorta and the stomach before the rotation being attached to the body wall via the dorsal mesenteries and the ventral mesenteries. This is the coelom cavity 
the future peritoneal part of the future peritoneal cavity. So the spinal cord. Again, he will be the right side, and here the left one all the time. Yeah, the spinal cord, neural crest, the aorta, and uh, this will be the stomach. And the dorsal mesentery. The ventral mesentery. The ventral mesentery already contains at this stage the hepatic butt, the hepatic diverticulum, as the primordium of liver right and now what happens is that uh, the dorsal mesenteries rotate this are shifted this way while the ventral mesenteries are shifted this way uh, this is the coelom cavity and the the walls are made are presented by the lateral Mesoderm, which is the parietal layer called the somatopleuric, sorry, somatopleuric mesoderm, and the visceral layer being made, represented by the sponchnopleuric mesoderm. Uh, and this is the uh, liver, liver butt. So after some rot rotation, the stomach is already shifted and rotate it partially here and what happens with the mesenteries is that we got this here into the ventral mesentery the liver is growing inside so the right side looks like this the left side on the left side the dorsal mesenteries is in is growing and it contains the primordium of the spleen and dorsal pancreas. So this is the stomach. And what is new here is this enlargement of the liver in inside the ventral mesentery and then it's this uh, primordium of spleen it originates from the mesoderm and it's the dorsal pancreatic butt here in the dorsal mesentery. Now what happens here is that this part of the dorsal mesentery will fuse with the mesoderm forming the dorsal body wall. Therefore everything here will become part of the retroperitoneal space. So after this process we got the stomach here with completed rotation and what happened to the mesenteries is that we got huge 
liver here. Okay. Then we got one intraperitoneal organ, which is a spleen. And the rest fused with the dorsal body wall. So the pa including the pancreas. So secondarily, the pancreas became strapped behind the peritoneum in the retroperitoneal space. Here is where the border used to be, but now it's fused. Let me add also other retroperitoneal organs uh, like kidneys will be here. And let's label the... Uh, oh, let me add the liver. And let us label the, the scheme. So this is the pancreas. Uh, secondarily in the retro, retro means behind, retro peritoneal space because this is the peritoneal, peritoneal cavity, right? That evolved out of the coelom. We got the spleen here as the int as an intraperitoneal organ. In the retroperitoneal space, we got also the kidneys, also from the mesoderm. Uh, this ligament between the spleen and the space where the kidney is, is the spleno-renal ligament. The, kid the ligament between the spleen and the stomach is the gastrosplenic. Ligament. So these evolved from the dorsal mesenteries. Uh, this is the stomach, right? This is the liver. It co occupies most of the original ventral uh, mesogastrium. This is the falciform ligament of the liver. So the original attachment of the ventral mesentery becomes this. And this is the lesser omentum. And together with this rotation of the stomach and mesenteries, the space behind that will be the, the omental bursa. So this is... Uh, simplified version of the demonstrating the rotation of the stomach and the mesenteries and explaining why the pancreas used to originate inside the peritoneal cavity but finally it it's behind it